Returning to our developing story on the flooding rain event, we're joined by our meteorologist Rob Sharp. And Rob, we may have some more live pictures, but you've got some recent pictures to show us of the incredible flooding. Yeah, it's been pretty remarkable what's happened across the regions. A lot of water flowing across the Hawkesbury Nepean catchment in particular. Uh, we've got uh, some pictures there on the bottom of your screen. Uh, that's south of Sydney, where there's been some landslides. And this is another picture uh, from south of Sydney. Wollongong, of course, where there was flash flooding early this morning. That's Coromel Street in Wollongong. And this is Mount Kira, uh, where a cabin was washed away. And the people in that cabin had to be taken to hospital after uh, sustaining some injuries. So a very significant weather event that took place, causing flooding in many locations around the region. So uh, the weather event is southeast of... Uh, New South Wales, and it's still moving south. So here's some of the 24-hour totals that we've experienced. Uh, so generally moderate falls for southern New South Wales, except south coast and further up. So Wollongong, 195 in the gauge. So many Sydney suburbs seeing some big totals there as well. And so here's some of the statistics. So it, Chatswood was the wettest suburb in Sydney, 189 in the gauge. Wettest in four years there. Penrith, uh, wettest in more than 30 years of data at the site. Uh, 195 millimetres for Wollongong is the wettest in 26 years. And Albion Park, uh, wettest in 13 years. And Blackheath, wettest in four years there. So uh, a lot of water uh, flowing through the regions. And as you can see, uh, these are some of the pictures of the landslide that has taken place in parts of southern New South Wales. So a number of roads have been closed courtesy of this big flood event. So another one of those landslides having significant issues is up around the Megalong Valley. As you can see, this is the Megalong Valley Road. This is the only way in and out of Megalong Valley. And so it's expected that food drops will have to be done over coming days to people who live in the valley and have been cut off from the rest of the Blue Mountains. So on the radar, this is what it's looked like. That system has now run southwards down through New South Wales and the ACT. Uh, the latest radar showing clearly that the bulk of the rain is well south of Jarvis Bay. It's down uh, on the south coast itself. I wouldn't be surprised if the warning gets cancelled at some point this afternoon. So this system is on its last legs, but there's still some more showers and storms around for New South Wales through today. Uh, and there's one of the later forecast models indicating what's likely to take place. Maybe a couple of severe storms for southern New South Wales today. But there's the official latest warning from the Bureau. But the top half of that warning, uh, we're no longer seeing any severe weather attached to that. Now, for the Hawkesbury Nepean. Let's talk about that in a bit of detail now. So we've still got major flood warnings in that region because there's been a truckload of rain coming through. So the Warragamba Dam, for instance, that is spilling. And so our Warragamba River flows into the Hawkesbury Nepean. But there's about five main rivers that flow into that catchment. And so they're all at different heights and they all combine in the Hawkesbury itself eventually. So the Bureau have said that North Richmond, Menangle, and Putty are likely to reach the major flood level today. But they're not talking about what's likely to happen tomorrow and into Monday because it's quite difficult to forecast. But there's potential that multiple other regions could reach the major flood level and the Windsor Bridge could get shut uh, later today at the earliest. So a lot of moving parts to this system. Uh, but let's have a look at the waves because they've also been damaging in their own right on the south coast and Illawarra. Sydney's had big waves, but they're starting to ease back in size. And by tomorrow, the waves will be smaller. Also, Queensland, not to be outdone. Also, with showers and storms that have been active and they're starting to pick up again in the central coastline. Here are some of the totals over the last 24 hours uh, with 50 millimetre falls for Rocky and Gladstone. And in the forecast, still... More showers and storms to come today and tomorrow we could see some heavy falls on the coast of Queensland, maybe for Brisbane. So looking across the country today, plenty of sunshine for the centre and the west, but it's all about that east, Janie.
It certainly is. And uh, when you're speaking to the New South Wales SES, and there's been around 17,000 mm. people without power. And as you said, the the wild winds across the eastern areas as well. We'll talk to Kayser Shields in Brisbane. But we've seen a lot of rain, haven't we, in the last week in places like Charleville as well. But you're saying most of the rain and storms across the southeast. Yeah, so just north of Charleville, we had 200 millimetre falls earlier in the week. So Charleville's under major flooding right now. But the good news there is that the levee is holding. So it's protecting the town. All right. And dry skies across the the western northern parts and central areas as well. <laughs> Quite a contrast. Thanks so much as always, Rob.